What's your name? All right, so uh, we're going to go over uh, the questions in this video. I'm going to upload this video on, on March 15th, by the way, if you, if you read that. Um, click in here, download file if you didn't try. That downloads it onto your computer so you can open up on the screen to answer the questions. So let's, let's take a look at the questions and then see. Uh, let me see. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, how many times does the dishwasher fill during the normal HT cycle? So if we went over here and we looked at the dishwasher diagram, how would we use this to, um, to answer that question? Where do we need to go to answer that question? The cycle selection options. Okay, cycle selection options. What, what are these called? What's another name for these? Time charts? Timer charts or timer sequence charts. So the question asked about the normal HT cycle. So if we zoom in a little bit, here we got the normal HT cycle. We got normal cycle, heavy wash, normal cycle. So this here timer chart is telling you what's going on inside of the machine as it's advancing through the cycles. So if we started it, it had three, up to three pre-washes. You could start it here on this one or, or so forth. And any of these black lines represents what is energized or what switch is closed. If it was a mechanical timer, it would be actual timer switches, but what are we talking about here? Because this is not a timer, is it? No. What is it? Board. Yeah, if we went over here to the schematic, this is the actual computer board, and everything's running off of this computer board here. All of these components are being energized, so what would be on the board that would be telling them to run? What would we be, why did it jump from one page to the next? What, what do you think would send power to those parts? If it was on a computer board, what? The door switch? No. It's locked. Relays. 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 Relays or also known as triacs, depending, it could be a relay or a triac. That's what sends power. Power comes into the board. A relay is nothing more than a magnetic switch that closes and sends power out. Triac is an electronic switch. So what was the question? The question says, how many times does this machine fill during those cycles, right? Yeah. So we got water valve, circulation, drain motor, heater, dispenser, vent. Each one of these are a component in that schematic, and I'll go back over it in a minute. But here's water valve. So anytime you see this black dot here, that dot represents when that component is energized. So when you first turn it on, as the timer or the computer board is advancing through the cycles, it energizes the water valve and the vent is energized here. And that means there's a vent on the door that keeps, allows the moisture, the hot air to come out of the dishwasher when it's running. So it runs and then it stops and then the circulation motor comes on and then this stops and the drain motor comes on and then we start filling again. So we fill, wash, drain, fill, wash, drain. Now if we follow this up here, we have minutes or our increments, which is like a timer chart, how many minutes it takes. If we looked at this right here and followed that up, it'd be exactly how many minutes. Look at this fill here, approximately how many minutes would that be? Two minutes. Two or almost a minute and a half. If we were to like do this as a straight line, it would actually come about halfway in between these two here. So it's about a minute and a half. Did it touch 87 seconds for water? For well, that was water? a different question. We'll get into that for a minute. Mm -hmm. But um, the question was how much time it was how many times. Right. So if we go normal HT, we look at how many times we see this black dash here, and that represents how many times that component is energized. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then dry, and that would be the end of the cycle. So that answer should have been what? Seven. Seven times. Okay? So it, it energizes seven times. Um, now, if we go to the next question, what increment does the dishwasher fill during the normal HT cycle? So, 
we got many increments. It's on the first increment. If we follow this line up here, it would be on the seventh. This one here would be on what? 13th. 13th over here. 13th, uh, 22nd, 34th, and about 65th. So you have to actually put all those increments to be right because that's every one of the increments that it would be. I understand that. Increments is nothing more than a measurement in time. Okay? And so that just talks about at what time it would fill and for how long it would fill. Let's go back to the next question. What two portions of the cycle does the dispenser operate and give exact increments? And why does it dispense in those portions of the cycle? So what two cycles is the dispenser energized? And we follow it over here. This is the first one. It's in the main wash. What increment would it be? 36. Okay. And then the next time it's energized is here, and that's what? The final rinse. And that would be about 77. All right, let's talk about dispensers on dishwashers. Dispensers usually only have one main compartment or one door you'll close, or if you twist it, you fill that up with soap. But right next to it, what do they have a place for? Rinse aid. Not just the rinse aid, but there's another little open area that's not covered. The oh, the extra? It's extra soap. Oh. So when you look at a dishwasher dispenser, you have, let me see if I can look one up and show you. you just give me a second here. Uh, Frigidaire dishwasher dispenser. This is one right here that would be inside that dishwasher. And they're not showing it open. I wish they gave me an additional picture. Oh, yeah, here we go. It's open here. Uh, so if we look here, this dispenser has two compartments. If we were just doing like a normal wash cycle, we would fill up this compartment right here. If we had like an extra wash cycle, we fill up that compartment. So a dishwasher could actually fill twice, but the thing is, it only will dispense one time. And what that means, this door will only open once. We can't open and then drop out some soap and then close again, because all the soap's gonna come out. Well, if we look at this picture again, you see the little holes here. So what happens in the dishwasher is that hole is open if we look at this compartment here, they're right here, those holes, and that allows water to get into just this compartment, not that one, and right here there's a rubber seal that seals it off, that keeps water from getting in there when it's washing. So what happens in some dishwashers that's not even covered, as soon as you put the soap in that compartment, when you would close the door, it would just fall into the bottom of the dishwasher. And the full, first time that dishwasher would fill up with water, it would be an actual wash cycle because it used soap. So if we went back to that cycle chart that we were talking about, and we said, oh, well, it, it fills the water here, so if that soap fell into the dishwasher the first time, this would be a wash. What would happen to these three here? Would it be a wash or a rinse? Amen. It would be a rinse, why? Yeah, no, so. It'd be the soap because see, water would come in, it'd start washing, it'd grab that soap that's in that one little tiny cup on the side, and it'd start washing dishes with the soap. And then here, what's it going to do? It's going to drain that out. So I'm going to fill with fresh water, but our dispenser doesn't energize till way over here, so that door is closed. So now we just got fresh water circulate drain, fresh water circulate drain, fresh water circulate drain. And then we fill with water another time, and it's going to drop the soap in that cycle right there. Notice the heater comes on in that last pre-wash. So when it's washing, it's heating up the water as it's washing. That's to increase washability, to help kill germs and everything else. All right, so when we look at these two soap cups, 
this one's going to come out, even if I start on the third or fourth pre-wash, it's going to come out in that pre-wash and it's going to drain it out. Then in that normal wash or the main wash, we call it here, the main wash, that's when the detergent's going to be energized. Now let's take a look at that detergent dispenser for a second. Does anybody know what this piece is here? Let me zoom in a little bit to see if you could get a better idea. Is that a switch? Oh, so wow. I don't know if I can zoom in on it without this window down here appearing. I don't know how to get it out of here. But if you look at the mouse over, do you know what this piece is here? It's like a plunger. It is the dispenser. It is the part that's being energized to dispense the soap. But what is that part? Part is a wax motor. Well, what is a wax motor? I've never heard of a motor made out of wax. It's basically a little heating element inside of there, and it's filled with wax. And this plunger right here has a spring that's attached to the inside of there. Now, instead of the spring pushing it out, the spring is actually pulling the plunger in. So the plunger is being pulled real tight, and inside of here is some wax with a heating element. And when the heating element comes on, it gets so hot, the wax starts to expand and slowly pushes this piece out. Now, if we look, it, ha it pushes this lever here. And I can't use my finger to do that. It pushes this lever here. I can't. Why can't I get the picture to show? Let's reload it. It pushes this lever here. We follow this lever up. This lever comes over here and does a second function. So this whole piece here performs two functions. When we lock the door for the dispenser, you energize the wax motor once, causes the soap cup to open. Now that the cup is open, and we turn the motor off, the spring's going to pull that plunger back. So now it's like reset a second time. When it extends a second time, it comes over to here, and what that does is it dispenses your rinse aid through this final piece right here. So if we looked at the diagram, picture here, your rinse aid comes out of that little tiny hole right there. So if we look at the schematic, this one here is for the main wash, and that's when the soap comes out, the big cup. And then if we look here, the final rinse, that's where rinse aid is injected into the dishwasher, mixes with the water, and that helps sheets the water off. It's almost like rain -X, that when it gets on the glass, and the dishwasher stops washing that water sheets off and doesn't leave drops of water onto the component. Okay? Um, let's look at that rinse aid. So, the way the rinse aid works, and I don't think they, they show it with it open, the way the rinse aid works is. You unscrew this cap, and underneath this cap, some of them have like a little arrow you can adjust to more or less. So you can actually control how much dispenses during that rinse cycle. Okay, if you don't use a lot of dishes and plates, you can turn it down a little bit. If you're having a big party, you can raise it up. But when you take and open up the dishwasher door, it fills a secondary compartment with rinse aid. And when it stands up, that little bit gets trapped in the, in the secondary compartment, the rest stays in the larger compartment, and when that wax motor is energized, the liquid pours out of here. It will only come out if the wax motor is energized a second time. It will not come out when the door flap open. Okay? So that is the Frigidaire dispenser right there. Any questions on, on that? No? You good? Let's go to the test. Okay, so the answer, what portions of the cycle give an exact increment and why does it dispense during those portions? So the answer was it does it twice. 
I don't have the number, I gave you guys the number earlier. And then why does it do it in those cycles? One is the detergent dispenser and the other one is to rinse aid dispense, okay? So that same compartment does two separate things. During the water service test, how long in rounded off minutes is the total <coughs> test cycle? Eight minutes. Eight minutes, so let's take a look here. Eight minutes. We go into schematic. This is the test cycle. Seven, four, seven, four. <laughs> six and a half. We're rounding off. Yeah. Well, if we look, this is the whole water service test. <clears throat> so we, this is the total time in seconds. So it's one minute, two minute, three minute, another three minutes at six. 75 is seven and a quarter. And then that's another half. So that's seven and three quarters. And then almost a half there, so it's about eight and a quarter, eight and a half minutes long. So if you go into the diagnostics and, and they tell you here how to start the, uh, the water service test, it automatically goes through each one of these steps for you. It starts off here and it starts to fill and energizes the detergent dispenser, then it fills again, then it washes and heats the water, then it'll pause and just heat, and washes and heat, wash, heat, detergent dispenser, and energizes all these components. So the answer was actually how long was that test cycle? It's around about eight, eight and a half minutes, okay? <clears throat> the next question, what does all the ones and zeros mean in that water test cycle? What do all these ones and zeros mean here? Why not? Okay, but be more specific. On and off what? One, on. one, one, off. one means that it's on and off means. Okay, so if we're we're in step number one, the water valve would be energized and the dispenser be energized. So if it has a number one, it's telling you what parts in the dishwasher should be running at that time. So the idea behind this is if the detergent didn't dispense or the machine wasn't filling, if you just turned the dishwasher on, these computer boards you don't know if you're in a fill cycle, you don't know if you're in a wash cycle, you don't know if you're in a drain cycle. By going through these steps, you can energize specific components and put your voltmeter on there and see if the computer board is sending power to them for testing purposes. So when you first get in there, you know you're filling the dispenser, then this is the wash motor and the heater should be on. So this is telling you when the cycle should be energizing that specific component. Okay, so that's what that is for. And the ones mean that it's on, and the zeros mean it's off. All right? Anybody understand that? Okay. Let's move on to the next question. Describe the procedure as to how you would test the dishwasher if the customer said it was not filling. And uh, be specific as what you would do and how you would test it. So you go to someone's house. And let's go through the schematic now. And the customer says to you, hey, my dishwasher's not filling with water. That's a little bit too, can't make it much bigger or smaller there. You don't have much in between. Okay, so if the customer says, hey, my dishwasher's not filling, what would you do? How, how would you approach this? What's the first thing you would do to test this out? Shut off out. Well, you, what do you mean shut off out? To see if it's on. Well, for me personally, if the dishwasher has an elbow in the front of it, I like to uh, close the shut off valve, disconnect the water line, and then open the valve a bit to see if water is coming out of that line and if it's under good pressure. All right. So, but um, I don't think I wrote it down. Basically, I said, what would you test? Without taking the dishwasher apart, I didn't say that. That was the last was, question. Yeah, was the There was another question. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see. Let's put that question. Okay. So, go back to the question. What was it? This one right here, right? So. Yeah, you would test to see if the water's on, and that's almost the same to the other question, that you want to check that the water's on. In answer to the other question first, I'm going to jump to that and then come back to this one. 
Without taking any of the panels off, the first thing you want to do is go into the sink and make sure that the water's turned on. Someone might have come and done some work in the house prior to, or someone might have uh, had a drip and they turned it on and didn't tell anybody else in the house and they didn't know the water's turned off. What was the other thing you would you would look for on the other problem without without See taking any panels off? If what? See the float. The the float, the float. Itself is yes, inside the dishwasher there's a little plastic piece that floats up and down and when it fills with water it shuts off the power to the water valve and if we look at the schematic here that's uh, where's the water? The water valve's here. This float switch is right here. If the switch is open you will not have power to the water valve and so you want to make sure that the float is going up and down and what you want to do is listen for the clicking noise just to see if it's hitting the switch. Just because it's clicking doesn't mean the switch is good, but you want to make sure, because I've seen sometimes that people had the dishwasher for so long that, have you ever seen a bathtub that gets like a little ring around it? Mm -hmm. You know, like it's time to clean your, your bathtub, yeah, but the dishwashers, food starts to float sometimes on top of the water when it's washing, and it creates like a little ring around it. Well, the float has a, a tube sticking up, <clears> and a float has a pin that sticks down in it, I've seen the outside of these tubes sometimes build up a food and the float goes up and down with that hot water and then the float goes up and it, that, that food's sticky and it keeps the float in a raised position. So sometimes you just hit it and it'll drop down, the dishwasher will start to fill, but that doesn't mean it's done, right? What do you gotta do now? Clean it. Clean it, Clean it make sure it don't get stuck up there again. Okay, so if that float switch is not energized, it's not going to energize the water valve. But going back to that other question, describe a procedure, what procedure as to how you would test the dishwasher if the customer said it was not filling. So really what would you do? Can you do the service test? Go into the service test and then do what? Energize the water valve. Okay and no water comes in, now what do you do? Because that's what the customer told you, no water's <clears throat> coming in. I would test to see if there's power. The screen valve. Check the what, sir? The screen, the screen valve. The screen, screen on the water valve? That. That, that could be bad, but what would you say? T uh, test to see if power is being received at the water valve. Yeah, that's what, that's what we would do first, is you would go to the water valve, because to check the screen could be a problem, but you have to turn the water off and you have to disconnect the line. Let me tell you, some of them, they're connected with a straight piece of copper, 3 8 mm -hmm. line, and to take them off, you don't have a lot of room, so you're using a wrench and you're trying to undo that line, and then to put it back on, the plumbing fittings, if they're not perfectly straight, it's hard to tighten and to put back on. Last thing you want to do is take that line off if you don't have to. I've learned it's better to unscrew the valve from the dishwasher and then break it loose. If you can pull it out some this way or pull the dishwasher out and get to it, sometimes it's easier. But one thing you want to do is you want to put your voltmeter on the two wires going to the water valve itself, right where the wires come in, stick your meter leads. Now go into that water service test that we just talked about, and it's supposed to energize that valve right away and see if you have electricity. If I have electricity there, what does that mean? Well, that what? The valve is bad. Valve is bad or there's no water coming in. There's no water you know, from the house going to that dishwasher. It's shut off. Or, or the valve is clogged with the screen or something like that, now I'm going to take it apart. But if I don't have voltage, then what? Uh, it could be the cables. board or the water. Yeah, so if I go to the water valve, it could be the board or it could or be the what? Switch. The wire. Or the float switch itself. Or what about the wire? Yeah, wires could be bad, but very rarely do dishwasher wires go bad unless they burn. And if you're down there checking voltage, if a wire is burnt, you're going to obviously see it. And the float switch and the water valve are usually right next to each other in the dishwasher. So you're making that voltage test, you can visually ins inspect those components. So you want to put your voltmeter right on these two wires coming into the valve and see if you've got electricity when you go into the diagnostic, the water service test. You have voltage, either the valve's bad or the water's not coming into the dishwasher. If you don't have voltage, this float switch could be bad, or the board could not be sending power down. And then the third thing could be wires, but it's not likely that wires go bad that often. Okay, let's take a look at number seven. When installing a drain hose, 
how high should the drain be installed in the cabinet and why? Minimum height of 32 inches. Minimum height, you found that? To ensure proper drainage. Okay, so basically I just wanted you to search around for the technical data on this. And... It's on the other sheet. Yeah, I didn't know if it was up or down to get the other sheet. Um, to the left, right there. Fold letters. Where? Up, up. Fold letters. Right here. Uh, to your left, left. There you go. Right section. Oh, right here. Uh, the drain hose must have a loop, a minimum height of 32 inches. So let's say the dishwasher is here. If your sink was right next to the dishwasher and your garbage disposal is hanging down here, and then you've got your little dishwasher port right here on the disposal, if the disposal goes out and then down into the dishwasher where the pump housing is and, the, and so forth, if the customer's got food in the disposal, the water's going to want to rise up into the sink but this hose is lower than a sink, so the dirty water would run by get back into the dishwasher. If a customer calls you out and says that their dishwasher smells bad and they got dirty water in it, they can turn the dishwasher on and put it in drain, and it might drain that water out if the disposal was clean, like they, they ran it and it drained out. Problem is, though, is if there's any food or debris in there and they use the sink, if it can't go down here fast enough, it'll start filling up in the disposal. Once it goes higher than this line, it runs down into the dishwasher. And it's a very, very common occurrence that someone does not install it right. So if this is the, cap, the top of the cabinet here, what you should do, whether you're underneath the sink or here, it's easier here. I take a little drywall screw, screw it in as high as I can, and I take and loop this, um, loop this line up like this and down, and I just take a little zip tie, and I don't pull it tight. I don't want to kink the hose. I just create a loop around the screw and let the hose hang from that zip tie so that it's easy to take off if we need to, but it keeps it up there so that it creates a reverse drain trap. So that means the water would have to get this high in the sink before it would go up here and then back down into the dishwasher. So the 32 inches would be off the ground. That would be almost the height of the countertop in the customer's home. So the higher you go, the better. That way it keeps dirty water from back feeding into the dishwasher. Okay, what water temperature should be coming into the dishwasher to clean properly? 120 degrees. Okay, so let's um, clean this up first. <laughs> So if we look here at the specifications, the water supply, the, the suggested minimum water temperature should be at least 120 degrees. Give me two reasons why. Uh, Just two. Boil to kill bacteria. Water doesn't boil till 212 degrees. This is only 120. I'm going to boil at 100. Um, no, 100 degrees Celsius. This is Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. Okay. It's only 49 degrees Celsius. Because... So the colder the water, the longer the cycle, because it takes about one minute per increase increment to heat up. Okay, and so it, that's not the answer I'm looking for, <laughs> but <laughs> what he's saying is, is, is it takes one minute for every degree to raise the water temperature. So if someone has 90 or 100 degree water coming in, and we want 120, it's going to take 20 to 30 minutes of just washing before it reaches that temperature. Some dishwashers when they get to sandy temperature or high temperature washes, it stops the, the advancing those minute of increments and can extend dishwasher times. I've had customers call and say they turned the dishwasher on at night before they went to bed, woke up in the morning, and the thing's still running. One of the biggest things is, is the dishwasher doesn't fill with enough water. When it's washing, it's not really going over the heating element, not heating that water. And that hot water is not enough to cycle the thermostat or the temperature thermostat to tell it to advance the next cycle. So what were you saying, Chris? We're saying uh, if the water is too cold, I imagine the detergent is not going to dissolve in it. That's a big thing. If you have cold water, and especially if we're up north, detergent, especially powdered detergent, doesn't dissolve well in colder, colder temperatures. You know, up north, their basement, the water pipes could freeze it gets so cold. So that water can be close to 35, 40 degrees as it enters a washing machine. 
or a dishwasher. And at that colder temperature, it's not going to dissolve the detergent. The detergent is going to float right on top like bubbles. The other, th the other reason would be what? Have, have you ever had like a, a fried egg? Like egg fried egg? It's rotten smell. No, but what, hap what happens when you break the yolk and some of it gets on the plate, if you don't clean it right away, it sticks to the plate, right? And if you're washing a dishwasher with cold water, it ain't going to break it off. So we got to get that hot water to help break through some of those hard stains and hard stuff that's on our plates to help clean them. So the water, the hot water gets dissolves the detergent and increases washability. Okay, it's, it helps wash that stuff off the plate because the hotter we can get, the, the cleaner we can get it. Okay, so let's go to the next question. The dishwasher heat water for various reasons. What is the highest temperature that it will heat the water? 150 degrees fifty Fahrenheit. Well, sanitizer would be 150 degrees Fahrenheit, plus or minus 5, so that means it could be about 155 maximum heat. Now, we have a high limit thermostat at 200, that's if these don't shut off, but we have temperature, temp boost, and sanitize, 150, 155. So sanitize, if someone's sick in your house, or someone's got coronavirus, you know, you want to make sure that you sanitize and you kill all those germs so that you're not eating or drinking out of the same plates and cups. You know, commercial dishwashers only wash for about three minutes or five minutes. They wash their dishes in their commercial dishwashers. They don't run a long time, but they run extremely high temperature. So they sanitize and they just throw a lot of water at it at one time and then they don't have a drain pump, they have what they call a wastegate, just opens up and goes right through a floor drain. So the higher the temperature, the less germs that are going to be spread if someone's sick in your home. Okay? But the maximum temperature is about 150, 160 degrees. So that was the answer to that question. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next one. What does the dishwasher use to determine how clean the dishes are? in the dishwasher and describe basically how that part works. Turbidity sensor? Oh, I, I didn't know the name of this. I just put sensor. <laughs> so it detects the impurities in the water, like the murkiness. And how does that work? Um, it's just the density. There's a transmitter and a receiver and shoots light. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's, let's take a look at it. I've talked about that to some people. I think I talked about that to la you last week, Chris, right? Mm -hmm. It's like two prongs or infrared. Or a dishwasher turbidity sensor. Uh, this is a good picture right here. Okay, this is very good. Uh, if you look, we have a transmitter and a receiver in this turbidity sensor. Um, I don't want this. So we got the turbidity sensor here. And basically what happens, it shoots a little infrared beam from one side to the other. And I use an example, like when, you know when you walk into a clothing store or some store, you hear a little bell ring or something as you go in the entrance of the store. So if you walked by and, and you've crossed an electric beam of light or an infrared beam of light and, and you broke the beam. So what happens is when the pump is circulating the water through washing, the water's directed through this component right through there. And if there's a lot of food or dirt in the water, it breaks that beam of light from the transmitter to the receiver. The more it pulses, the more food that's in the water. The cleaner the water is, the less pulses it is. So the dishwasher's monitoring that flow of water through it. And if it sees that the water's way too dirty in some of these dishwashers, it'll actually stop washing and then turn around and tell it, drain that dirty water out, fill up with fresh water, and let's do this again with a fresh batch of water. It's almost like you're washing your car and you notice that the water's really, really dirty. Now when you're washing your car, you're washing dirty water, 
dump it out, put fresh water, and start all over again. So this thing me measures how much junk is in your water and tells the dishwasher, hey, let's, let's keep washing, let's get this water out, let's put some fresh water in. So even though the timer chart says fill and drain so many times, the control board can override it in some manufacturers and tell it to drain the water out, fill up with more water, and do that a couple of times till it, that water comes clean. Okay, so if it ain't coming off your plate after the third or fourth time, the dishwasher says, okay, I've tried, I'm not getting it off, let's move on, and it goes on to the next cycle. Okay, so that's the turbidity sensor. Let's go to the next question. See, that was a terrible question. That is the function of the thermistor. How does it work? It's supposed to be, one. what is the function of the thermistor and how does it work? <coughs> measure water and temperature. It's to measure the temperature of the water. So we talked about those different temperatures, 120, 150 degrees, and everything else. That even if the water coming into the dishwasher is not 120, in some of these cycles, and if we looked at this chart here, oops. <clears throat> Moving that diagram on my finger doesn't work too well. But if we looked on this chart here, we have all these different heater options that are energized, and that would be controlled by the thermistor in the wiring diagram. Thermistor is sometimes located in the turbidity sensor, and this machine actually has two thermistors and it senses the water temperature. Some may be in the, in the flow of the water or may be screwed into the bottom of the sump housing where the main wash pump is and senses the temperature of that water. And when it senses the temperature of the water, it has a resistance value based on a specific temperature. We have NTC and PTC, uh, negative and positive temperature. When temperature goes up, resistance goes up. So the board is monitoring the resistance of that thermistor. So as the water is getting hotter, the resistance is changing, and that board looks at that resistance and says, oh, at this resistance, it's that temperature. We've got to what we want, we're done. You had a question? Um, no, no, no. It's more like a review of the answer. OK, I, go ahead. I mean, I, because I didn't see that it had two thermistors. So my answer was like, oh, it helps. I, I think it was something along the lines of like, um, I mean, helping to control the, the temperature of the water, right? But because it was linked to the turbidity sensor, I was thinking like, oh, because it, the murkier the water, the hotter the temperature is going to be so that it could eliminate that cloudiness. Well, the thermistor like, won't know anything about how clean or how dirty the water no, is. No, but because it's in the same little... The well, same we're, we're just measuring it in two different parts of the machine, that's all. Okay. That's the only reason why it would probably be there. I, I haven't seen them, but if you noticed... It says thermistor here. Why is this one got a dotted line around it? None of the other parts have a dotted line around it. It may or may not be present. It may or may not have that thermistor in the diagram. A dotted line may, may mean that it's an optional part. So you, if this dishwasher didn't have a turbidity sensor, it could have just the thermistor there just for making sure we have the right temperature. Okay? So that dotted line means may or may not have that. All right? So the, the function of the thermistor, it senses temperature, and based on the resistance value, the board knows how hot it is to assure we reach that sandy temperature and everything else, okay? Um, number 12, if you had the front panel off and the console open, how would you test the heater for continuity from there? So we're going to the schematic here, and I wanted to check my heating element where would I put my meter to make that test? Plug eight, or the red wire. Or key eight. Key eight. Okay, so we would put a meter lead here, and that would test this side of the element. How do I test the other side? Well, a white neutral wire. Neutral. So if I don't see any neutral wire on this board, do you? No, if you're in the front panel's off, I was thinking the white wire from the door switch. Yes, exactly. You would go to the white wire and the door switch here, and then you would close the door, you'd energize the dishwasher, and you'd go through your diagnostics again for when that heater is supposed to be energized, and you check for 
voltage, but the door or you could check for continuity. Isn't it? On the same point. What? Isn't the door panel off? Yes, but the door panel is the outer panel, not the whole door. Okay. The door the door would still be able to close and lock with the dishwasher. The panel that would be off would be in the front. Okay. It'd just be a decorative piece <clears throat> covering the components. So we can check ohms here and check the continuity of that heater, or we can check voltage and see if the board's sending power to that heater. Okay? All right, so the next question. You already answered that one? Well, if you were testing the heater from the controls and the meter showed an open circuit, what part or parts could have failed to give this reading? Heater or high limit thermostat. Okay, so if we were checking continuity from the controls here and here again, we would go from this side of the door switch. Uh, the only two things is a high limit thermostat and the heater. Then you'd have to go down and you would verify which one of those two components it is. But from the, from the control panel, you can make these two tests with your meter. And if you got a reading, it meant the heater and the thermostat's good. If you didn't get a reading, you'd have to go down and test to see which one of those two are bad or a wire, right? And then the last question, I think we already answered, correct? Right. Yeah. That was, uh, no water comes in at dishwasher main wash motor pump. You want, before you take any panels out, check the float switch and check the water valve underneath the sink. Any questions about the schematic or anything here? Mm -hmm. I don't mind. I don't feel like you got any like stupid questions, you know? There's no stupid questions. No? Okay, so tomorrow we're going to have a different diagram, different questions, and we're going to go over testing and, and components. We're going to try to do this twice a week now um, for the rest of this trimester if I, can, if I can fit it in. I might take a break once in a while, but we'll go ahead and we'll uh, make some of these uh, videos and, and some things and we'll post them online so you guys can go back over them again if you want later so you can refresh your memory. Save those diagrams, that link's there, but if Frigidaire ever takes it down, you want to make sure you have your copy of the of the link, okay? Awesome. All right, guys, that's it. Daddy. <laughs>